Good morning, folks. As we do every once in a while, this is going to be one of those live style news shows so you can see how to go through and get some of this information that you end up seeing each morning in the news. We're going to start at spaceweathernews.com. Right beneath the headers here are our two solar sequences. On the left, it's 193 angstroms. On the right, it's 304. At the beginning of these 48-hour sequences, you can still see some of the plasma filaments lifting away from the limbs, but really the sun has calmed over the last 48 hours, and there has been no eruptive activity. There hasn't really been any sunspots either, and that's why there's really no solar flares, as you can see right here. This is a six-hour chart. This is the three-day chart. We're really not even getting up out of B range and that is very, very calm. Coming down below that, we see the solar wind, ACE on the right, Discover on the left. We're going to zoom in a little bit on Discover so we can see it properly here. Uh, apart from that density bulge uh, yesterday, which did create a little bit of geomagnetic instability, we really have not had much. The stream calmed back down. The solar wind speed is in normal range, uh, and so is the plasma temperature. This is that instability it did cause yesterday for just a little bit. Space weather is very calm. Like I said, we really don't have any sunspots, and so it's time to move on to the wind map. So this wind map here, you recognize it, windytv.com. Now, I know that this central low-pressure system in the United States doesn't look very impressive, but by comparison to the powerful high-pressure system around it, this represents a pretty tremendous temperature and pressure gradient. So what does that mean as we come to the rain and snow? Well, it's going to start pulling the moisture from the tropics as it moves across the states. But as soon as it gets to the east coast, something's going to happen. It's going to start taking this moisture from the Atlantic and really wrapping it around the storm. Now that's important because as these lows cut across the United States, well, pretty much as they go anywhere, half of them pull upward from the tropics and the other half pulls down from the poles. And so it's going to take all of this moisture, throw it on shore to meet this cold air, and that's the reason why we've got these major snow records in jeopardy over the next day or so as this storm is actually going to creep up the coastline as well. Uh, yeah, by tonight this thing will be over by New Jersey, Delaware, Philadelphia, and then up into New England as we get into tomorrow as well. So big uh, winter storm potential there, uh, sort of more of the usual coming out west. Eyes open, folks. This one should actually break some March records. Let's quickly go over to Europe because we have another situation where it's all about the, the low pressure versus the high pressure. Uh, so this pressure system, sort of a multi-cell system cutting up in between uh, with its convergence in between Iceland uh, and the UK, that's going to take a rain drive. And also this little bitty low that you might not be able to see and the high pressure is going to be where everything's clear. So as I come to the rain and we progress through the day, you can see that we do have some color. The rain is going to be following that convergence line or this tiny little low. To be honest, it's actually Spain with the biggest chance to have some significant flooding today. Uh, could actually see uh, some at the coast of Norway as well. Now that I'm looking at that rain drive and some of the low-lying areas, uh, could see some washout and things like that. We're going to quickly come over to Australia and New Zealand as well. Now these storms right here are what have caused all of the problems and the flash flooding in New Zealand over the last few days, but it does appear those are pretty much ready to move on. And we see that the tropical flow coming towards the eastern part of Australia pretty much going to be inundating them with rain most of the day. And these lows that are coming uh, from south of the landmass, uh, they are going to be able to start affecting Perth and some other southern areas. Uh, within another 12 hours or so. Anyway, let's quickly pop up above here because we can see a couple of lows lined up right next to Japan. And that is interesting because that's where a lot of the blot echo focus has been. Let's go over to the prediction center of QuakeWatch.net. Pull that over to here. As you can see, this is where all of the blot echoes are located. We have a concentration here. Whereas on the, uh, you know, across the water, we're really just looking at Chile, Argentina, Bolivia, and maybe the atmospheric signals, which push it a bit more to the northwest. But over here, we have atmospheric signals near Japan. We have a fair number of blood echo events, and so we're going to be keeping a very, very close eye on that. Uh, speaking of things we're keeping a close eye on, yesterday we showed how cold it was breaking records at the Iditarod. Well, 
This was not that far away, and this was back on March 4th, just at the start of the month. Not a new daily record or a monthly record. The coldest all-time temperature recorded up in this part of Alaska, as you can see right there. Thank you, Patrick, for that share. Anyway, as I said, it doesn't look like the sun is doing much. Uh, quickly peek in on quakes, actually. The largest of the day was a 5.5 in Mariana. Uh, not going to be really any concern for the folks there, but as a blood echo, uh, it's significant. Uh, for those who are always wondering what's going on in the United States, uh, we have very, very tiny, not at all unsettling activity uh, towards the west. Uh, 3.8 in Deer Lodge, Montana, maybe a bit above average, but... Um, really nothing to be concerned about. And then, of course, we have the frack attack in Oklahoma. Anyway, getting back to space weather news, like I said, the sun was calm. We're going to be keeping an eye on um, on all these things that could be leading to the earthquakes. And hopefully you are, going, you are doing that as well. Uh, because we do have our contest beginning right now. It actually began last night. Uh, since you guys are going to be predicting earthquakes anyway, since you're going to be using the tools, since you're going to be posting your forecasts, why not give you guys a reward for doing it? And so uh, members are eligible to win the award. Uh, Non-members can still participate in the contest. And if you win, you'll get lifetime membership for free. Uh, but in terms of the uh, other prizes, that really is just for members as a thank you for supporting the tools and the public forecasting forum. Uh, very, very short. You can see right there, that's the end. That's the beginning. These are all the rules to the... Uh, to the contest and as soon as somebody wins we'll run it back and do it all over again uh, very much going to want to go ahead and check out quakewatch.net slash contest for more information on that uh, we'll be keeping our eye on the sun but don't expect to see much otherwise catch you tomorrow be safe everyone